Hi guys, so I saw this beautiful bag design with yolk and I'm totally in love with it. So I'm going to be cutting it now. So first off, I'm going to draft the basic bodies for the back. I'm going to draft the back basic bodies. Okay, so let's just do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is to measure my zip allowance. I'm going to be using one and a half for my zip allowance and I'm going to roll it all the way down. Okay. I'm going to measure down the length of the handle. I'm using nine inches for the handle length. Then the waist length for the back, I'm using 16 inches plus half inch allowance. Slant the zip allowance part. So on the waistline, I'm going to go in by three quarter inch and I'm going to connect it upward to this point. So this is the new zip allowance. So from this line again, just going in by the same amount and connect it back to this red line. So this is going to be the new zip allowance. So this white shock now is the new zip allowance. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to all my measurements towards this side is starting from this white chalk. So from here, I'm going to put the shoulder measurements divided by two. The shoulder is 15 divided by two. That will be seven and a half i'm going to roll it straight down to the chest line this way then the next thing is for me to measure three inches inward here and i'm going to drop this shoulder by one so that i can slant the shoulder then you had half inch to this line for your seam allowance okay next you just finish the handhold by placing your fresh cuff this way So the next thing, I'm going to put the bust circumference measurement divided by four on this chest line. Don't forget, my measurement is starting from the white shock. So the bust is 42 divided by four, that will be 10 and a half. I'm going to put my seam allowance. It's to come to the waistline. I'm going to put the waist circumference measurement divided by four. The waist circumference is 36 divided by four. I'm going to put the nine. Because this is the back, it's going to have one inch dart. And then I'll put the same allowance of two inches and I'll connect these points together. Okay, so now back to the main business of the day. This tie is um is having a yoke, and the yoke is very very interesting. So let's do it. What I need to do first is to mark the neck depth, it's a V neckline, so you have to decide how low you want it so i want it to be i want it to be seven inches this is seven inches for the depth then the width i want it to be 3.5 inches 3.5 this point to this point you can make it lower than this if you want so the next thing i'm going to do is to measure how i want the yoke to be the yoke is like a u so i'm going to measure how low i want the yoke so uh let's say i'm doing 11 inches 11 inches yoke 11 is here so i'll come to the shoulder i'm going to locate the mid middle of this remaining shoulder width that i have here after the neckline so i'll look at the midpoint this way so I want, I'm going to connect like a U all the way to this point to get my yoke. So this is how my yoke is going to be. We should extend it more. Maybe like half inch further away. So that it gives me a more rounded shape. Yeah, good like this. Remember, you can still bring the yoke down 
depend on your preference so the, the yolk is ready so from from here to here round like this this is the yolk and this is the neckline so what I'm going to do is for me to cut the neckline first Okay, so I've sliced it. So this is the neckline. You don't need it. You discard it. This is this other side. We've got the shape of the ham hole. We've removed this part also. So this is the bodice on its own. We have our neckline. So the next is to cut out the shape of the yoke. So this is the yoke we are replacing this and when you're replacing this you have to pay attention this is a v neckline and we want the edge of our lace to be here the edge of our lace is going to be here okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to fold it i'll be folding it into two this way So this is the yoke and this is the neckline, the, the V part. We are going to align it such that it's going to be like this. Can you see? So I am going to reduce my zip allowance because it's like it's too wide. I'm going to remove half inch from the zip allowance. So that you can get the shape very well so i'm going to align the edge of my lace this way and you see the way i've positioned it so such that the edge of the lace is giving me is giving me this the edge of the lace is giving me the v neckline can you see align the v neckline with the edge of the lace okay then <clears throat> because this is your you need to add your seam allowance to the down part so I'm adding, depend on how stretchy your fabric is, you can add half, you can add one, depends on how stretchy whatever thing you're using is. If it's cutting, you must add one. But if it stretches off, you just need to add half, which is what I'm going to do. Add half inch from the same allowance. Half inch is just perfect for me. So let's, let me just do this by the sides. So I've cut out the lace fabric and this is this is the yoke now. This will be stitched back here. Alright, so I need to also cut the Ankara fabric. Yes, Ankara fabric is going to be exactly like this. It's going to be exactly like this. So this is how it's going to look. So what you need to do is just to take to your machine, you place this on top of this, and then you start from the shoulder, you stitch all around till you get to your zip allowance. You do the same thing to this side. So let's do that on the sewing machine. I feel this is too light. This is too light. So um, I'm just going to add another one behind it like making it to be two to each you can just put them in gum so that they can stick together so i've launched my dart position and i'm going to sew in my dart
So you do the same thing to the second side. Can you see? So the next thing you have to do now is to use your lining to turn it. So let's make it one side away so that I will show you. So starting from the shoulder. So this is the corresponding part of this lining. So move this downward and then mash it together at the shoulder and then you follow that your previous seam line, okay? So when you get to this point, you are going to sew this way all the way to the down. Can you see? Make sure you notch. People, you are supposed to be looking at me. Notch it all around so that by the time you turn it, turn it to the good side, it will relax. Then also sew the side seam with half inch. Can you see? So that is done. We are done. It's pretty simple. So you go ahead, you iron it, you go ahead and iron it, so you fix your zip the way you're supposed to fix it on a regular day. This is it from the good side, and from the wrong side, this is what you have, can you see? So we need to iron this, we iron this one. So off camera, I, I went ahead, I coupled the dress together, because I already have a detailed tutorial of how I made the front part of this dress on this channel. The link will be in the description box. So the last thing I'm doing to the dress now is just to fix the zipper at the back. Okay, so you just fix your zipper just the way you would. Okay, so when you're done fixing the zipper, ensure you align the joining parts like the way I'm doing now. Just use your pen to mark them so that by the time you're sewing the other side of the zipper, everything will align and jive properly. Okay, so I did that and I fixed the second side of the zipper. And voila this is the end result the back is beautiful I've been making moves like a ninja I could play it cool like I'm winter I can make it rain like a cat tsunami you wanna slip and slide we can link up working all the time make it duller be a student try to make a dollar Wanna live life like I'm on vacation Gotta get those good vibrations oh, I 